screen. Okay, hopefully everyone can see the screen okay. So today we are going to be talking about the role that inflammation has in the aging process um, and how, why it is that inflammation is so fundamentally important as a root cause of making us feel um, sick and also making us feel Now, I'm just going to mute everybody just in case there are any background noises. Um, yes, yeah, so inflammation as a root cause of um, the aging process and also a root cause of uh, chronic illness. And we'll be looking uh, a little bit later about how these two are linked. Um, so basically the way inflammation works and the reason why it is such a problem for, um, for us, particularly these days in this day and age, is because it dysregulates the two major communication systems in the body. And those two communication systems are the endocrine system, which is our hormones. <clears throat> For those of, me who, uh, those of you who've worked with me before, you know that hormones are basically messenger molecule, molecules that instruct the cells in our bodies what to do. Um, and of course, our, um, the other important um, communication system is the autoautonic auto system, otherwise known as our nervous system, uh, which is... Um, how our systems function, uh, heart, heart rates. Has someone got their radio? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So the endocrine system and the autonomic nervous system are the two main communication systems in the body, and they are both massively disrupted by the inflammation process um, that uh, takes place. There are creatures on this planet that live, to, live forever, that seem to be immortal. This is the uh, Turritopsis jellyfish that lives um, in the Mediterranean. There are also creatures um, uh, called hydra, which live in ponds in the UK. And these um, creatures are pretty much unique on Earth in that they um, regenerate. So when, the, um, when this... Uh, um, jellyfish comes to the end of its life it just kind of goes back into a little polyp on the coral and then it starts its whole process all over again so it just cycles and recycles and of course we can't do that we are slightly different as human beings and the, the way we work is we obviously have cells billions and billions of cells throughout our body and in the cells there are chromosomes which are strands of DNA that are combined that are in fact the blueprint to us as individuals. Um, each of our strands of DNA is unique to us and it is very, very um, crucial. Our DNA is, is very, very crucial to our life. Um, and a few years ago, um, a guy called Leonard Hayflick uh, discovered that our cells, um, in fact the cells of most living beings, unless they're jellyfish and hydra, um, only divide and replicate a maximum of 50 times. It was felt um, until that point, until he made his discovery in his petri dish um, in, in somewhere in the States, that, um, uh, that cells just went on dividing indefinitely, because that's how we, how we grow, how babies grow. They start off as one cell, it divides into two cells and so on and so forth. And life is this whole process of cell division um, up to a point of this, this uh, 50 times. And then, um, of course, the cell um, uh, dies, is reabsorbed into the system. The nutrients that are in the cell, the information that's in the cell get reabsorbed into the system and we carry on. Um, these little red socks that are on the chromosome, on each of the feet of the chromosome, are called telomeres. And the telomeres are actually what inform the cell how quickly or slowly it should divide. And it's this process, it's the speed at which cells divide and replicate that um, informs the aging process. And it's a bit like Goldilocks and her porridge. You don't want it to happen too quickly and you don't want it to happen too fast. And you don't want cells to be dying off too quickly because you know damaged cells 
um, ill cells uh, are, um, we, we, we want our cells to be healthy and vibrant because healthy, vibrant cells means healthy, vibrant us. So this whole balance between the, having our cells to divide, the length of time that it takes them to divide, which is determined by the telomeres, and also um, the, our DNA, which is, which is what we are born with, all inform the aging process. So in 2011, I think this is the most astonishing fact, in 2011, we passed a really significant watershed in the history of mankind. Um, in 2011, for the first time ever, more people on the globe died from non-communicable disease than from all the infectious diseases, accidents combined. So for our ancient forebears, the cause of death was, I don't know, being hit by a rock or mauled by a tiger or, or um, fighting. For us, the risk of death actually comes from our own lifestyles, from the non-communicable chronic diseases that actually make us age and make us unwell. So although today people are living longer, over 60% of people's deaths are the result of a protracted decline. So my mentor and guru, Dr. Mark Hyman, actually says that we're, we're not living longer, we're dying longer. So the dying process, the illness starts early on in our lives and it kind of compounds and compounds as we um, struggle with uh, the lifestyle conditions that many of us have, have to live with. And Daniel Lieberman, who's also a very famous um, gerontologist, said that for every year of added life that we have gained from medical knowledge and medical experience um, since 1990, only 10 months of that year is healthy. So we're extending life, but we're extending an unhealthy life to a large extent. So people are being kept alive, but the quality of life is not necessarily ideal. So what has changed in the, in, in the last few years that has brought about this uh, this situation. Obviously medical science has improved so people are living a little bit longer but if we look at what's happened since 1970 there are a lot of lifestyle changes that have um, happened around us and to, and to us. Most importantly sugar consumption has increased massively. Um, the use of glyphosate has also increased significantly. Uh, it's extremely toxic, it's a known carcinogen, it's also very um, uh, damaging to the endocrine system, which we, as I mentioned before, is incredibly important to uh, our sense of wellness. Interestingly, whilst people have been putting lots of um, chemicals and glyphosates and other things on the soil, um, the growth in industrial farming has meant that the nutritional value of the foods that grow in that soil has been declining. So we're not getting, I think a, a stalk of broccoli has something like 30% um, less nutrients today than it had in 1970, which is significant. Um, we are also exposed to a lot of toxic chemicals in our personal care products. Um, I think the average woman in the UK is, is absorbing 16 different potentially carcinogenic and or endocrine disrupting chemicals just through her personal care products. There's also been extensive use of antibiotics and anti-inflammatories, which are known to disrupt the microbiome. And we'll have a look in, in a moment at why this is so important. Um, and these, um, the use of antibiotics has also kind of, to an extent, under, undermined our um, own immune systems. Uh, and it's a kind of been a, a very recent trend that has, um, that has happened over the last 40 or 50 years. And whereas, you know, our parents and grandparents mostly cooked from scratch and they ate whole food um, that perhaps they'd grown themselves, um, cooking from scratch these days is the exception. It's not the rule by any stretch of the imagination. People are lulled into a very full sense of security that um, cheapness and convenience is more important than their time, perhaps, or um, the quality of the food that they eat. And of course, we have these days a relatively sedentary lifestyle. Our ancestors were very active. They walked most places. They were busy um, growing their food, um, looking after um, many of them doing manual labor. And we now spend a lot of time in front of screens. Our, 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 our experience of work is very different from that of our ancestors. 
And so the co combination of that is a whole load of physical stressors on our system, um, combined with emotional stressors as well that tax our bodies this day and age. So these changes are, are so particularly significant because they each impact one or more of the seven pillars of aging. Now, all of these pillars of aging are interrelated. Um, everything in our body is interrelated and interconnected. But these include starting from, can you see my little, um, Felicity, can you just nod if you can see my thingy? Great. Um, <clears throat> So epigenetics is actually a relatively new, new science. And this is the way in which our um, genes that we're born with, our DNA, uh, reacts to the, the, the environment that we find ourselves in. So our genes can be switched on or off depending on our lifestyle choices. So epigenetics is really important. Inflammation is, is fundamentally important. Inflammation, we'll look at in more detail how it um, disrupts the natural communication systems in the body, um, causes a, a great deal of uh, disruption through, um, throughout all our systems, in fact, um, cellular damage um, uh, and, and massively undermining our health. The way we adapt or perceive stress is incredibly important. Um, real or perceived stress um, triggers a whole cascade of physiological responses that start with the um, cortisol levels rising, uh, it affects our digestion, it affects our, the blood flow to our brain, um, huge numbers of physi physiological effects just from the way we perceive or, 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 or work with stress. Proteostasis is um, basically the way our body <clears throat> manages the balance of protein. Protein is, of course, incredibly important. We are, uh, a, a, you know, we are a collection of various proteins, and um, the, the, that management of protein throughout the body is absolutely key to our muscle strength, to our the integrity of our um, bone structure, to um, our uh, ability to move um, smoothly and easily. Um, so, so protein and the way our body manages protein is very, very important. Obviously, stem cells and the regeneration of those cells, those cells are, are critical. So stem cells live primarily in our bone marrow uh, and to an extent in our um, spinal column, but they are the, the kind of core cells that kind of keep the, the system ticking over and the speed at which they regenerate and the way they respond uh, is obviously um, very, very important and is effective, is, is affected by um, the lifestyle and, the, uh, and our exposure. Metabolism is, we all know metabolism is key. It's the speed at which our body works. It's the kind of engine that keeps us ticking over. If our metabolism goes too fast or too slow, um, it is it causes us problems. And then we have the whole issue of macromolecular damage. This is the damage that is um, brought about through um, free radicals um, and that, that's kind of blast around in our system and they damage the DNA, our DNA, and also within our cells, there are little energy factories called mitochondria that have their own DNA and um, uh, free radicals can actually damage the, the DNA within our mitochondria, which affects obviously our, our energy production and our experience of wellness as a whole. So these are the seven key pillars that impact basically how we feel. And, you know, these, we can feel old when we're in our 20s, if we're exhausted and we're fatigued the whole time, if our immune system is compromised and we're inflamed. Uh, we can feel, um, you know, seriously unwell, irrespective of our age, depending on our levels of inflammation and how they impact, impact each of these pillars. And here we go. This is the root of the problem. The one, the food that we eat, is one of the key ways that our body understands the environment that we live in. It is the way our body works out whether or not we are safe. And if our body feels safe, all our systems fall into place. If our body feels unsafe, all hell breaks out. 
So this food, this food um, that is extremely high in processed carbohydrates, in denatured proteins, in, um, in chemically treated oils and fats, is excessively, excessively inflammatory. This food is, without wanting to be dramatic, <laughs> is pretty toxic. So this food, if, you know, a lot of people, this is all they eat. And if this is the information that they are putting into their bodies, if this is, if you like, the software code that they're feeding into their bodies, um, the information that their body is going to take is that they are not safe. The body will probably assume that in some way or another they are starving because they're not getting the nutrients they need. And it's going to be, its, it's detox systems are going to be overloaded. And it's going to be exhausted because it's going to be pushing uh, uphill against the against the against the flow. And the other big issue um, for us, particularly as women, is the huge amount of toxins that we absorb through our skin. I mentioned right at the beginning that the average woman in the UK um, absorbs sixteen different toxic chemicals a day through her skin. And if you think about teenage, I know my I've teenagers and concealers and spots and oh it just makes my it just it breaks my heart um so oh spot the prize for the person who spots the typo um so these chemicals that are in these um products that we use every day our shampoos our, our eyeshadows our, our our um lotions our um even the products you know, on top of that that we use to clean our houses uh, these chemicals are known um, or suspected, some of them, many of them are known uh, carcinogens, and they are known to disrupt um, our endocrine system, primarily because they are estrogen mimickers. Um, they, their molecules are very similar in shape to estrogen molecules, and they lock onto the estrogen receptors on our cells and overload, overload the system. So we have a combination of a pretty poor diet that most people eat, and um, an almost ubiquitous use of, um, of, of, of toxic products that go onto our skin. This is a picture of a, um, of a food oil refining plant um, in France. Um, the, the oil that is used to fry those foods we, we saw is, is, is a hideous, hideous product. So these kind of um, uh, these oils that end up in margarine or that used to deep fry foods, uh, chips, um, are chemically extracted from um, seeds, um, mostly uh, cotton seed or soybean seeds, uh, obviously some sunflower seeds, some corn. Um, they're chemically extracted, they're super heat treated, they are denatured um, beyond belief and our body doesn't really know what to do with these um, with these oils, uh, and it is that they, they are hugely um, inflammatory because they uh, start up a whole process of what's called glycation in the body, which um, creates um, little toxic uh, uh, compounds and um, creates free radicals in the body. So um, these kind of industrially produced seed oils are they're nasty products. We also don't move enough. This is actually an official photograph of my husband at the moment. Um, he is the uh, arch <laughs> um, catch potato, particularly when the rugby's on. But we, as a society, we don't move enough. We, um, uh, you know, we we drive in our cars and 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 we um, sit at our desks, probably in a very uncomfortable position, and then we watch television and we we don't get out and, and about and and get into nature and do all the things that are good for us. And we are very stressed. Our lives are really difficult. And um, it, you know, whereas stress is intended to be a, um, a short, um, a, a life saving process that, you know, gets us out of danger or helps us um, deal with a difficult situation, what happens to us these days is that we are subjected to a kind of low grade bombardment um, of stressful episodes that just kind of keep the cortisol levels ticking over and perpetuating that kind of low grade um, inflammatory situation that is so, so bad for us. So the net effect of all of this, this is a really gloomy chart, and I promise you this is the end of the gloomy bits. The net effect of all of this 
is we have all of these different things that we've been talking about, the bad food, the, the, the toxicity, the chronic infections because our immune system is undermined, um, our, um, the obesity, our, our, our tummies that are too big, um, the uh, damage that happens to our T cells and macrophages, which are part of our immune system, all of these things kind of you know, compound and compound, mitochondrial dysfunction, this is the little engines that are inside our cells um, that, that become um, dysregulated and stop producing energy for us so we feel exhausted and, and suffer from chronic fatigue. We have the oxidative stress that I mentioned, which is when basically um, our we, it's basically us rusting um, from the inside out and and, and um, our um, our dna is becoming damaged so all of these things lead to this um, concept of, of inflammaging and inflammaging this sort of um, low grade inflammation that sort of permeates our whole system leads to all these diseases which are um, so chronic today that, you know, ev everywhere. Sarcopenia is actually muscle wasting. Um, lots of people are, are anemic, you know, women um, of, of our age suffer from osteoporosis. Dementia is um, increasingly a, a problem, dementia and, and Alzheimer's. Um, I think you heard it here first, but shortly to be called um, diabetes three, um, dementia and neurological um, dysfunction, Parkinson's and things like that, depression. A big, big issue. Um, to, uh, inflammation is known to be one of the major causes of depression. Cancer, obviously, we talked about the, how it, the, the turnover of cells, and that's obviously implicated in cancer. And inflammation disrupts that whole process um, um, significantly. Kidney disease, um, type two diabetes, and of course, cardiovascular disease, and all of these things. This the decline of physical ability, frailty, premature mortality. Um, this multimorbidity, which is such a huge issue today, people are suffering from, you know, many, many different, um, different problems. I mean, I, I, I do actually, my, I'm working with a client at the moment who has liver issues, uh, kidney failure, cardiovascular problems, osteoporosis. Um, that's a lot for one body to have to deal with. But don't panic, <laughs> there is good news. All of this is reversible. Uh, inflammation is a response of your body to the moment and it is possible to change that moment. Um, and I have been there. Um, I, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Fran and I am a functional medicine health coach. Functional medicine means simply that it is a evidence-based process to help you function better. It, we look at um, the body in its totality, uh, holistically, and um, and sort of uh, co-create with our clients unique and specific um, protocols to help them um, feel the best they possibly can and to manage things like inflammation and um, dysregulation of key um, communication systems in the body. So this was me on the left um, about um, 13 years ago, nearly 14 years ago. I wasn't, I was 48. Um, and um, I was very overweight, as you can see. And although I was smiling in the picture, I was absolutely um, unbelievably depressed. We were, we were actually in Africa at the time for my husband's 50th birthday. And we'd just been in a balloon ride and, um, and it was meant to be the most wonderful experience and I could not stop crying. We got in the Land Rover to go back to the hotel and I was looking out of the window thinking, what is the matter with me? I, you know, this is just, meant to be a wonderful time and I'm ruining it for everybody um so I had zero self-esteem I was really really unhappy I was working very very hard and it transpired that I had metabolic syndrome so I was pre-diabetic um it transpired that I had a um H. pylori infection it's a particular type of pathogen that is quite common in my tummy uh I was um I had I was hugely um, inflammatory. I had all sorts of aches and pains and, and uh, there were days when I could hardly walk because it was so painful. Um, I had headaches the whole time. I was taking perhaps six or eight ibuprofen a day. Uh, I was a mess. 
and I eventually um, through I won't bore you with all the details but uh, I eventually sorted myself out it took me a while because I had to work it out on my own um, and this was me uh, after the process this was me actually two years ago um, feeling better to be perfectly honest than I did when I was 20 so um, I and all I did was make a few lifestyle changes informed by a bit of training I did. I, I, I trained in um, nutrition, I trained in um, health coaching, I trained in functional medicine, and I also trained in life coaching because the whole mindset piece and goal setting and all of that is really, really important. So um, this fun, fun, fun chart is a summary of basically of, of what I've learned. And I'm not gonna kind of bore you with it, but I want, it's a really, really important chart because it demonstrates beautifully the interconnectedness of everything in our body. So we, we, we've kind of been led to believe that if we have a tummy ache, we go and see um, a gas, gastroenterologist. If we have um, a, a, you know, achy hips, we go and see um, a, an osteopath. If we have um, some, you know, a bleeding issue, we go and see a gynecologist. But all of these things may and probably are connected. And this is the reason why. This is actually a, a kind of visualization of our gut. This, if you can imagine, is our GI tract. And here is um, a demonstration. These the little sort of bricks here are what's called the ep epithelial layer, which is the single cell, precious, precious lining to our GI tract. And obviously inside the GI tract, there are lots of different um, microbes and our microbiome uh, is essential um, to our well-being because of the byproducts of these different micro um, microbes and we um, thrive with a particular collection of microbes um, that produce a particular sort of byproduct primarily um, short chain fatty acids like this which um, protect the um, lining of our gut and um, and keep a nice strong muc mucosal layer here, which protects the, the lining. Um, in the presence of a bad diet and too many um, uh, anti-inflammation uh, inf drugs or PPIs, which people take a lot for um, indigestion, antibiotics and these sorts of things, um, our guts become inflamed and um, this inflammation breaks down the, um, the cell, the single cell lining of our, of our GI tract. And this allows um, peptides, which are uh, particles of protein, to get into the bloodstream. Um, and this, it, this um, alerts our um, immune response and it creates a massive um, inflammation throughout the body which then goes on to inform the endocrine um, system and our brain. So what goes on in our GI tract leads to how we feel. And I know that there are um, plenty of people, I, I've mentioned my depression. I do a lot of work with people who suffer from anxiety. Uh, and it's this inflammation, this inflammatory response that is in response to what goes on in our tummies that starts this whole process off. So here you have a kind of a, 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 a not ideal situation. And here you have a better situation going on where the junctions are nice and tight here between each of the cells. The immune um, system is able to kind of put its toe in the water and just test what's going on without um, overreacting. And the neurotransmitters that um, that send information to the brain and that send information from the brain to our autonomic system, uh, nervous system, uh, are all functioning. They're getting the, um, the, the, the coded information that they need in order to operate pro properly. Because a lot of these microbes produce chemicals that inform the production of these, uh, um, of these neurotransmitters that, that work with the neurons in the brain to tell our body how safe we are and whether or not it can function optimally or whether it needs to kind of um, jump into alert and start to protect us from a perceived or real danger. 
So this is basically, this sort of sums up the, um, the interconnectedness of, of, of who we are as human beings. And, you know, the, the premise here is that a, basically a med Mediterranean diet, which is high in um, protein and, um, uh, and low in processed carbohydrates is a good thing. And I would agree with that. Um, Sacrolytic bacteria are um, bact bacteria that digest sugars particularly well. So you want to have fewer of those. Um, and it, you might have heard that, that, that there are certain bacteria that predispose us to put on weight. It's them, it's the sacrolytic bacteria because they break down sugars and make it easier for our body to absorb. And we want to have slightly more proteolytic bacteria, which are the ones that uh, help us manage that um, uh, protein balance that is, is incredibly important to us. And so here we have with a, uh, with, whoops, with a um, standard Western um, diet, which is all those um, chips and, and, and fried foods and chocolates and things. <coughs> This is what creates a dysbiosis because it encourages the growth of the sacrolytic bacteria because they, they've got plenty of food because of all the sugar that is being eaten. And sugar doesn't come just, it's not just sweet, it's you know, savory foods that are cooked in, that are carbohydrates like pasta uh, is read by the body as a sugar. And we, uh, and we have low amounts with this diet of proteolytic bacteria which makes it difficult for the body to um, digest proteins pro properly and to move, move proteins around the body. So this is a complex chart because we are complex um, creatures. We are sophisticated, subtle, um, beautiful machines um, that are um, dedicated to um, finding and, and trying all the time to, to reach this, this balance that's called homeostasis, which is where things are naturally where they want to be. And what happens to many, many, many of us in this day and age is that we do not give our bodies the tools that um, they need to reach that homeostasis. And this is what sets up the inflammatory response. And this is what leads to this early experience of fat, chronic fatigue and um, uh, immune dysregulation and uh, allergic responses and all of these things that are so, so, so common. Um, so at the heart of it all, um, the hormones and microbes are really, um, really rule the roost. So our microbes are the ones that, um, uh, that, that, that form the center of who we are from a health point of view, and it is their byproducts and the way they communicate with the with the neurotransmitters um, uh, through this very complex kind of nerve system that exists over, uh, around our gut, um, in conjunction with um, with our hormones, that that dictates whether or not we are um, well and happy, or whether we are um, struggling. And of course, for us women. This becomes um, particularly poignant because a lot of us, you know, uh, struggle when we get to menopause. Menopause is a time when our hormones naturally shift um, and uh, any imbalance that is present already in the body becomes magnified. And, you know, nature has been managing estrogen and the shifts of estrogen for centuries. Uh, and it's relatively recently that menopause has become um, a, a, a thing. And um, there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of discussion at the moment as, as to whether most of the symptoms that people are experiencing at menopause, the flushes, the depression, um, the weight gain and all of this, is it specifically to do with menopause or is it just that menopause is magnifying the underlying situation that is already there? And therefore, um, it's never too early to start um, investing in your health through making good, um, good choices. We're, we're all used to the idea of saving up for our retirement and eating for, eating for retirement and eating for our, um, our older years is definitely uh, an, an investment um, worth taking. So how do we do that? Well, here is a, uh, 
a kind of baseline list I'm going to take you through of the things that would make the biggest difference to our health and well-being. Whole food, we said right at the beginning how we fewer and fewer people these days cook from scratch and they tend to go for unprocessed food. So eating plenty of vegetables, this, it, I would suggest this is kind of the order of importance of the foods that you ought to eat. So lots and lots of vegetables, all those phytonutrients and polyphenols and, um, and lignans and things like that that you find in, in vegetables and, and, and natural whole foods are absolutely essential. They are the little sort of chemical um, codes that tell, uh, uh, that give our body everything it needs to do the work that it has to do, which, is, which it wants to do, is to look after us. Our bodies are devoted to us. Their, their function is to, keep us, is to keep us safe and our job is simply to make the right choices to help them do that. Um, organic where possible, grass-fed where possible, meat and poultry and eggs. Um, this is simply to avoid the glyphosates and, uh, uh, and other chemicals. Healthy fats, um, our, um, our cell membranes are made from fat, our brain cells are made from fat, our hormones are made out of cholesterol. Um, fat, fat is absolutely essential. There are in fact essential fats that we have to eat there are essential amino acids that we have to eat from protein. There are no essential carbohydrates whatsoever. Um, so we, we have to have fat, we have to have protein. We need vegetables because we need the phytonutrients and the vitamins. What we don't need is, um, is donuts. There's no, no essential donut. Nuts and seeds, um, wonderful source of fiber and good fats and minerals. Uh, fresh fruit is, um, again, all those lovely colors that are in fruit and vegetables, all indicative of a, of a unique um, type of, of um, phytonutrient um, that work sort of geometrically with each other, kind of a two plus two equals five effect um, to, to bring us multiple benefits. And whole grains are also um, a very lovely source of um, B vitamins. Um, so black rice, brown rice, quinoa, that sort of thing. And I just want to stress again that it is much better to eat less quality food than a lot of very cheap food. Um, the humble cabbage just is worth um, a, a little uh, moment of focus. Um, these leafy green vegetables <coughs> are absolute um, powerhouses of nutrition and particularly for um, uh, women who, who are, are, are peri or menopausal, um, they, this diet, I can never pronounce it, it's called DIM for short, I'm just going to call it DIM. Um, DIM is this wonderful uh, compound that helps the, um, the, the liver in particular to deconjugate um, used or dirty hormones so that they can be eliminated from the body. And um, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, spinach, cauliflower, watercress, all of these vegetables are full of wonderful, wonderful dim and um, the sulfur that is also part of, of the detox process um, and indeed the um, energy production process in our cells. The fiber in cabbage is full of prebiotics which feed our microbiome. The good microbiome, the, the, the good uh, uh, um, microbes that we want to have, all those phenol compounds and phytonutrients that um, add up together to make something really, really powerfully good for us. So this, you know, good food is is not necessarily fussy. It's not necessarily expensive, um, and it's did not be complicated. Um, uh, cabbage is possibly one of the best foods you could eat. Um, and you know, superfoods and supplements. There are lots of really, really super healthy um, foods out there that do all sorts of good things for us. Um, we've got uh, you know spirulina and chlorella. Chlorella in particular is wonderful at um, removing heavy metals from the body. Um, cocoa is a fantastic. Um, this is really good news. Cocoa helps with cardiovascular health, with insulin regulation, boosts memory. Um, and also helps with skin uh, elastic, elasticity and, and prevents wrinkles. Turmeric is a wonderful um, anti-inflammatory food. So if you think about uh, natural cuisines, um, Indian food, South American food, and their use, their, their, their kind of instinctive use of herbs and spices to 
flavour their food and actually to create something that was incredibly healthy as well as being delicious. So um, I'm, I'm all for adding um, some, some superfoods and, and, and also work with, um, with supplements on occasion um, just to help people kind of throw the switch and get things back on, uh, back on track. But at the, bottom, at the end of the day, it's the food that we eat that is absolutely fundamentally important. So this wonderful chart, <clears throat> and if anyone would like a copy of this, just um, ping me through an email, fran at franmac.co.uk, and I'll send you a copy of this. This is, um, again, it's from um, Dr. Mark Hyman. He's, he's um, written a wonderful book called What, what the Heck Should I Eat? And he's just produced a cookbook, What the Heck Should I Cook? Uh, and this is like a great little um, roadmap uh, that shows you all the things that you should focus on and the things that you should avoid. So yeah, whole, you know, um, pasture raised meat, perhaps less of the processed meat and uh, sausages and so on. I will send that to anybody who, who is interested. Um, so the other golden rule, so eat whole foods. Um, the other golden rule is don't eat between meals. We, our society is absolutely um, addicted to food, to eating all the time. You see people eating on the train, on the bus, or down the street. Um, we don't have to eat all the time. In fact, it's very, very good for us not to eat. And the longer you can leave between eating occasions, the better it is for your gut. Um, the reason for that is that the gut, the stomach likes to empty itself. The gut needs to be, likes to be completely, the small intestine likes to be completely empty between meals. It takes about 90 minutes. For the, there's a peristaltic process, which is the muscle movements down through the gut to go from one end of the gut right to, to, to the other. And you need to have ideally two of those. So that's um, three hours between eating occasions to allow the gut to fully clean itself. And that <clears throat> allows the, the microbiome to, to re-establish itself. It, it means that we're not kind of constantly putting sugars, um, even, you know, even Doritos, are read by the body as sugar, they might be salty, but they're pure carbohydrate. So by constantly putting sugary carbohydrate substances into our bodies, what we're doing is we're feeding those sacrolytic um, bacteria, which is keeping the, our system um, uh, uh, um, imbalanced. Uh, it's putting too much sugar into our bloodstream and making um, uh, and setting us up for inflammatory responses. So don't eat between meals. If you can manage to have a really two really good meals a day, then that is a fantastic way forward. Um, choose your cos cosmetics and personal care as carefully as possible. Um, and here are some great resources for you um, in order to find out where to go to get good products. Um, www.erg.org, um, that's the, um, oh, sorry, there's another typo, should be E, wg.org environmental working group uh, sorry about that um, is a fantastic resource and they have all sorts of um, uh, uh, information about sunscreens and household cleansers and moisturizers and all sorts of things um, and there's a, an app that you can download onto your phone called think dirty shop clean and you can put products into it and it will give you um, the details of what chemicals are inside each product um, because basically in this case um, information is power and that the regulation around um, what goes into our skincare is is not as strong as it could be um, it's better than it is in the states but e even so there are, are a lot of uh, toxic chemicals that pop that we are putting direct on our skin. Um, I am actually an ambassador for this company, Tropic, which is a very, very clean um, cosmetics company. I love it to bits and I use their products um, all the time. And I'm happy to talk about that if anyone is interested. Drink plenty of clean water. We've heard this before, but it cannot be overstressed, the importance of this. Um, water is, um, you know, we, we, we are primarily water, um, our, our body is water, we need water to, to flush out uh, um, toxins, uh, we need it to plump up our cells, we need it to keep our skin healthy and vibrant, and it is the, the uh, kind of 
core fuel that our body uses. It uses the hydrogen and the oxygen in the water to generate um, energy for us as well. So water is really important. And movement is really important. And it doesn't have to be, in fact, ideally it's not really stressful and, um, uh, and uh, um, overburdening to the body, but it's kind of regular and fun and gentle. And just being able to move and stretch and uh, keep ourselves supple is a really, really positive thing. And we need to breathe. This um, is something that we actually forget all the time. Breathing and deep breathing is um, another way that the body uses to inform itself in terms of where we are in the world. If we're stressed, we breathe um, quickly and shallowly in our chest. Uh, and when we're naturally relaxed, we breathe, breathe slowly and deeply. And if we trick our body into thinking we're relaxed, even when we're not, by breathing slowly and deeply, it will shut off all those physiological responses that the body makes um, in, response, in, in, in the event of stress. So our cortisol levels will go back down. Our, um, our um, heart rate variability will reset um, back, to, um, back to factory settings and we will be able to be much, much more productive. And it's just a kind of, it, it's just taking the odd deep breath and then taking another and then doing it every time you remember is just a fundamentally important way of, of lowering that, um, that inflammatory response. And so here is the recipe for lowering inflammation Creating happy hormones and having a happy life. Happy hormones, happy youth is the, is the mantra. Eat whole foods, in, avoid these industrialized seed oils, um, particularly margarine, they're used in, in processed food. Eat organic, leave gaps between eating occasions. Don't put toxins on your skin if you can help it. Move and try in some way to manage stress in your life, whatever it might be, whatever brings you joy in your life will help you to manage uh, manage stress. A walk, um, you know, a walk in the forest, um, playing with the dog, um, you know, huggle with the kids, whatever it is, um, have as much of that as possible. So all of these things that we need to think about is, you know, it's kind of difficult. We all, none of this is rocket science. Um, but for most of us, you know, we don't, we're not out here on the outer edge with a nice kind of smooth, even line. You know, for most of us, we struggle with whatever it might be and our little shape in the middle is a bit wonky. Um, and obviously what we want to do is we want to kind of get, optimize all of these aspects of our, of our lives so that we can feel as well as we possibly can. And it's not rocket science, it's all very, very simple, but because something is simple doesn't necessarily mean it was easy. If it was easy, we would all be skinny beans and super fit and healthy and we'd none of us have any sleep issues or have any problems. But the fact is it's not easy. Everything around us um, is encouraging us to compromise our health. You know, our lives are stressful. The choices that are put, you know, the cheap, easy choices that are put in front of us and not necessarily the ones that are good for us. You know, we need to put more effort into living well and therefore that there's a disincentive to do that. Um, and, you know, we each of us have so many elements to our life. I mean, I've, I've put, you know, whatever it is, five or six different things here, but, you know, our finances, our, our self-esteem, our, you know, what we believe in, the contribution we think we're making, how we enjoy ourselves, our family, blah, blah, blah. All of these different elements, you can have as many of them as is relevant to you. And, you know, you plot them on the circle and see where, you know, where, where things are going well, where they're not going so well. Um, it, you know, life is complicated, it's difficult. And so um, sometimes it's nice to have a bit of help to pull everything together. And um, I just like very quickly at the end, um, I'm going to I'm going to unmute you all in a second in case there are any questions. I hope there are. Um, but this is my new membership club just to help people prioritise what is important for them and to help um, bring a little structure and, 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 um, and support to uh, um, making the best possible lifestyle choices that will help you manage this whole inflammaging piece and feel the way you want to feel, like you're 
like yourselves again. So if I unmute and let's see if anybody has any questions. This is when there's like deadly silence and everyone's thinking, oh no. But just in case, if anyone, if anyone wants anything explained, there was some quite complex, um, quite complex um, issues touched on here. So if anybody wants any more details or have anything explained, I'm very happy to do so. Hi, Fran, it's Rosemary here. Um, hi, I was, hi. Um, I was just wondering, when we were doing the, um, the detox uh, session with you, we were having snacks, um, or there was scheduled to be snacks in the morning and the afternoon. Was that just because we were cutting back on food and we would need to have extra or um, is that so we should now that we're out beyond the program should we stop having this max yeah. well it's a very very good question so this was like a what we were doing there was a, a short three-week program and um it's very difficult for most people to go from a standing start to kind of full speed and what we were trying to do what i was trying to do there was to make it easy for people to make the transition and if you're very much used to eating little and often um, it is very difficult to go suddenly from one thing to another just because something is optimal doesn't mean that we have to do it from now and forever we can that's something that we work towards so that was the idea of the program there was to ease you into a better way of um, eating so, so we should uh, moving forward we should uh... Uh, cut out um, ideally. yeah ideally so what what we were doing in that short program was we were we were we were swapping out the unhealthy snacks for healthy healthier um, healthier options and small solutions. and uh, and hopefully that is so I my amaze balls I call them a, um, a, a gateway a gateway food because they kind of lead people on they're not they're not perfect they're not perfect at all um, but they uh, open the door to a healthier way of living they make it easy for people to transition to no snacks at all. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi, Fran. Uh, Margaret here. Hello. Hi, I just wanted to ask about fasting. Yes. What is the best combination? Um, the best combination depends um, very much on the individual. So, uh, as you know, I'm a great um, I'm a great fan of it, intermittent fasting, and it's taking this concept of of leaving spaces between eating occasions and just you push it and you push it and you push it as much as you can, because the longer you can um, you can go without eating within reason I'm, we're not talking about starvation um, the better the chance your body has of um, using up the, um, the sugar stores in the muscles um, and of um, uh, promoting this uh, the process of autophagy which is the, the process by which cells um, turnover in the body um, and to optimize the, 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 the length of time that the cells live um, and it reinforces the immune system it does all sorts of very powerfully um, important things um, so it depends on the individual I mean we're designed to fast for large chunks of the day anyway we, we don't eat while we're sleeping which is a fast um, and the trick is really to extend that period if you can so that you have your last meal in the evening as early as is comfortable and then you have your first meal in the day as late as you can manage um, and then just try and keep um, uh, to well, ideally to two meals a day is, is is perfect but we're not talking about calorie restriction we're talking about two good meals with plenty of protein pl plenty of healthy fats um, plenty of complex um, carbohydrates um, to really make sure that you're getting all the nutrition you need and, uh, and all the calories you need to function properly. So, so it depends very much on the individual to answer your question specifically. Some people um, can just survive very happily on a 16 hour fast every day. Other people like to do that once a week. Um, some people 
happier just doing the three hours between meals um, and sticking to three meals a day. Um, it just depends on your individual on your individual tolerance. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yeah, I I started extending to sixteen hours a day, which I actually quite enjoy and feel better. You do feel better, yes. Than eating breakfast, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this whole uh, this, the whole concept of breakfast being the most important meal of the day is a is a marketing slogan that was developed by um, Mr. Kellogg. Um, the, the, whenever it happens, that that meal that breaks your fast, um, it is important, and it should ideally be a protein based meal, um, not a carbohydrate based meal. Um, but it doesn't have to happen at seven o'clock or eight o'clock in the morning. It can happen at eleven or twelve, whatever feels comfortable for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Did, did everyone understand the kind of connection between um, this concept of inflammation and inflammaging and chronic disease? The link between the two. And so by protecting yourself from inflammation, you're really protecting yourself from, from illness. Fantastic. Okay, well, if anybody, as I said, um, any, any other questions that you want to um, message me privately or um, just ping through an email, um, I'd be very, very happy to answer them. And I'm just delighted to see you all. I hope you found this interesting. And um, uh, do let me know if there's anything I could do to, to, um, to help you in, in the future. Fran, were you going to pick a winner for the um, a free person to go in the Happy Hormones Club? Yes, I am going to do that. I, I was yeah, wondering... I'll... I've written everyone's down actually. I've put them in a I've written them in here. If you want okay. to pick now, should I do that? Or? Yes, do that. Yes. Yeah, so I've put everyone's name on a bit of paper and they're just in a little pot here. So I'll just choose someone. This person here. Who's this? I think. <laughs> Amanda. So there's I think there was two Amandas on the call, but this is the Amanda without the surname. <laughs> there's someone called Amanda and there's another Amanda. Ah, uh, so this uh, is here. Um, let me find the other one so it's not yeah so it's not Amanda Buckingham it's there, there's just an Amanda <laughs> on the call whoever that is I don't know. yeah okay well Amanda if you're there can you drop me an email and I will set you up with um, a free membership to the Happy Hormones Club fantastic congratulations yeah very really exciting all right guys lovely to see you and um, I hope you have a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend and I look forward to being in touch soon. All the very, very best. Thank you, Fran. That's yeah, great. Thank, thanks, you. Fran. Thank, you. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.